One of the things that I see all the time online, when someone's asking about going solar, putting in a do-it-yourself system, or whatever it is they're asking about, well, the one thing I see as the, as the single most common reason for doing that is they want to save money. So in today's video, I hope to answer that question. Can you put solar power in to replace your utility power, and in doing so, save money? Well, first, let's talk about the average home ownership. Because in America, the average length of time that a person owns a home is 13 years. Now you're saying, whoa, wait a minute, what does that have to do with whether or not it's cost effective or it'll save me money or whatever when I go solar? Well, the first thing I think that most people don't consider is that if you put in solar power and you could replace your entire cost of utilities, then you've got to amortize that cost out over a specific span of years. For example, if it costs you $13,000 to put in solar and you're only going to be in your home for 13 years, then you have to save that $13,000 in that 13 years in order for it to be something that's cost effective. In other words, Let's say you spend $13,000 in 13 years in utility bills. So if you invest $13,000 in solar, will it equal what you would have paid in the utility bill? And over that span of 13 years, not 20 or 30 years, but 13. And I would actually argue less. I argue less because in the last 20 years, I've lived in three homes. 20 divided by three ain't 13. That would put my average at seven years. Will it go up? Well, I certainly hope so, but everyone knows that people sell their homes. Maybe you have to move, or maybe your equity in your home has increased, right? And you decide, hey, I'm gonna take that and put it into something else. So if you're seriously looking at trying to save money by going solar, that solar has to pay for itself, not and not just break even in that 13 year span, okay? So 13 years, $13,000, fine. As long as you would have spent more than that on your utility bill, well then sure, might save you money. However, the question is, will it? And do you spend that much? So I'm looking at my bill and my average right now is about $2,100 a year. Now you might say, well in 13 years, that's $26,000. But let's be honest, that's not true because electricity bills in the US are rising. So anybody in the solar industry will tell you, yeah, but you got to count for inflation. Well, I've done that, folks. Over that 13-year period, if I were to calculate what I spend average right now a year, and I put in a 2.67% inflationary increase to the cost of utilities, then over 13 years, my utility power is going to cost me about $33,000. Now, that is often the reason cited by people who want to go solar. Hey, I'm going to spend $30,000 in the next X number of years. I can save that by going solar. <laughs> but can you? The average cost of a 6,000 watt solar power system or six kilowatts is $12,700. So if you were to assume you're not going to run all the time on battery, you're not really going to be completely off grid. You're going to use the utility grid to provide you power at night, but you're going to feed back into it during the day. Let's say that's your plan. Okay, so you still have to replace all the power you use. Well, in my house, a six kilowatt system wouldn't work. A 30 kilowatt system might work, and now you're talking $60,000. Well, I just said that in 13 years, I'm gonna spend approximately $33,000 in utility bills. So $60,000 is not going to save me a dime. Now you could argue, and many will, yeah, but there are tax breaks. Well, sure there are. But those tax breaks aren't going to add up to over $33,000. Maybe they will over a course of years if the federal government allows you to claim it every year. But I've claimed solar energy benefits in the past because I have an off-grid cabin and we have it completely off-grid. It's all solar power. So I got to deduct some of that. But let me tell you, I only got to deduct it on the year that I spent it. That's it. And it just came off of my gross income. It wasn't like if I spent five grand, I got five grand back. That's not how it works. So if I had to spend $60,000 to replace the energy that I'm using, well, that, that's just unfeasible. It's not going to happen. I'm not rich. If you're rich, you could do it, but you're not saving money. And the people that are asking this question aren't wealthy people. 
These are people that want to save money. Maybe they're spending $100 or $200 a month in an energy bill. And they might be thinking, if I'm spending a couple hundred dollars a month, that's $2,400 a year. Can I save that $2,400 by putting in solar? Well, sure, if I put in $60,000, I could save $2,400 a year. But I'd have to be in this home for over 30 years to make that pay for itself. Now, you might be ready to just quit right now and say, okay, that's it, it's not cheaper. Well, well, we could talk about that. There are some options out there that can balance things out a little bit, but let, let's, let, let me give you an example of why I always try to tell people, look, don't look at solar as something cheap or something that's gonna save you money. That's really not why to do it. As it you cannot justify it. And it's like electric vehicles. People buy electric vehicles and they justify those because they say I'm not using gasoline and therefore I'm saving money by not using gas. Now anybody that justifies buying an EV because they're trying to save the planet, well that's a different story. But I'm talking about those that say I'm gonna buy an EV because I don't have to buy gasoline. <laughs> and I did this years ago, folks, when the Prius was like the car to have for people that wanted to not spend a lot of money on gas. But let's look at today. Prices have changed, right? You could buy a Mitsubishi Mirage for about eighteen, nineteen thousand dollars $19,000, right? That's their list price. So who knows what you can get it. And if you're smart, you buy it used and get it for less, right? But that's about what it runs versus the Nissan Leaf, which runs about $29,000. And these are just list prices. So it's $10,000 more for the EV. So will you save all that money in the span of time you own your car? The vast majority of Americans only own their cars five years or less. So if we just assume that you're gonna own your car for five years, which that's kind of typical, if you drove the Mirage 15,000 miles a year, which is a pretty common amount actually, and you got a combined mileage of 37 miles per gallon, which it can get over 39 on the highway, then your total cost for that span of time would be, based on today's prices, about $8,100. So that you take that $8,100, you add that to the $19,000 it costs you to buy the car, and you got $27,000. It's actually still cheaper than the LEAF. But the LEAF, you also have to spend approximately $49 a month in Washington State anyway for the electric that it's gonna cost to charge it up. Now you might say, well, $49 a month, that's a heck of a lot less, right? But that adds up, that's $2,940. So if the LEAF costs you $2,940 to drive it over a five year period, not accounting for the inflationary rate in utilities, which I did earlier, okay? But let's not even, let's say you get your, your, your utility costs, your electric costs the same over that entire five years. You're still spending over $2,900 in electric for the LEAF, which takes its total to $31,900, almost $32,000. So <laughs> the Mirage, 27, the LEAF, 32. You didn't save any money. Now we're not talking about all the other maintenance possibilities here. We're just talking about raw data and my experience with a brand new car, you could typically drive it because of warranties and things like that for five years without any major costs. You probably don't have to do the brakes or anything else. So overall, it is cheaper to buy the Mirage. You will not save money buying that EV. And I know that comes as a shock to a lot of people, but the problem with all of this is that there's a lot of hype behind things like solar power. And don't get me wrong, I love my off-grid solar power and it did save me money. But that doesn't mean it'll save you money if you're in an urban or suburban environment or even a rural environment where you have power all the way to your property already. Assuming that you can get, you know, four or five hours of good solid production every day. And by the way, the only time you're even going to max out the production on your solar arrays is when they're pointed directly at the sun and you've got a perfectly clear sky. Just because you buy a six kilowatt system doesn't mean you're going to get 6,000 watts out of it for four or five hours or 10 hours or whatever straight. That's not how it works. If you have a tracker that can perfectly follow the sun, yeah, you could get more. But if you figure an average of about four hours of production a day, a six kilowatt system is only going to give you about 24 kilowatts. Well, I need three times that to run my home on an average month. But if I wanted to keep that so that I could run my home in the in the hot or the hottest months or the coldest months where I use more power, it's going to cost me five or six times the money that that six kilowatt system would be because I'm going to have to have six of them. So, 
the initial outlay is expensive. Now you might say, yeah, but there's the tax breaks and then I'm not paying my electric bill all year. Well, true. Nobody asking the question, how do I build a solar power system because I want to save money, can afford to go out and spend $60,000. So they got to take a loan out. Now you got interest on top of the initial investment and you might've got a tax break. But even, let, let's say you got a 50% tax break. I said earlier, you're only talking, in my case, $2,100 a year, $33,000 in 13 years. And in order to break even, my solar power system has to replace all the power I use and not cost more than $33,000. Well, there's not a system today that can do that for $33,000 after all the tax incentives assuming I had the cash on hand to either install it myself or pay a professional to do the installation. There isn't a system that exists today that I'm aware of that would give me the 65 to 80 plus kilowatt hours of power that I'm using every day. Now, I do have a shop, so my shop uses some of that power and I recognize that somebody you know, who maybe only uses half the power I do, could look at it and say, well, maybe is it affordable for me? But you're still talking 40 kilowatt hours a day. Well, a six kilowatt system is only going to give you a maximum of around 24 kilowatt hours that day. So you got to have at least twice that, which takes you already about $25,000. Then you got to add batteries. I did the math online, looked at several systems. You're looking at 50 or $60,000 if you've got batteries to hold you overnight. So the bottom line, folks, no, buying solar to try to save you money is not the reason to buy solar, in my opinion. Certainly not when you're already tied to the grid. Now, if you're going to pay a whole bunch of money to get the grid tie, for example, you're in a rural area and you've got to pay, you know, several hundred yards of installation or a mile, or in my case, where our cabin is, three miles, yeah, you'll save lots of money. You even, you know, well, you're not going to save the kind of money we would here, but you could say if it costs $40,000 to put in power and then I have to pay a power bill, well, yeah, you're going to save a ton of money. But if you're already hooked up to the grid, you're, you're in an urban or suburban environment or even a rural environment where you have power to your home, you've got to figure out how much you spend every month on power and calculate how much that would be over a 13 year period with an approximate 2.67% increase in costs annually. And then that's the figure that you have to work with to determine whether or not solar power is gonna save you any money. Now there's lots of people that come in and say, well, yeah, but what if I save 10% or 20% or 50%? Well, but then you're not saving money. Just because you put in a solar power system that means now you only use half the power that you used to use doesn't mean that it was worth it. Not if it costs you the amount that you're saving in the first place. Might make you feel good because you think you're saving the planet, but that's not going to save you any money. Feeling good isn't going to help you save any money. You want to save money, you have to spend less than what is projected. If you spend the money, then that money's not saved and you have to amateurize the amount of money you spent over a 13 approximately year span. That's the average length of time you might own your home. And if you're young, I'd say five or six years because typically younger people don't stay in their homes forever. You, you would have to stay in your home for 20 or 30 years for something like this to pay off in that environment. So the answer is no, no, solar's not cheap. And solar is not going to save you money if you have to spend more money than you would have spent in the first place. Meaning if you're only going to spend 10 or $20,000 over the span of time you own your home in electricity from the utility company, and it costs you more than that to put your solar power in after all your incentives, well, it's not a money saver. You might not spend it every month. You won't have to send off the $200 bill to the, to the utility company. You'll just have to send off a bill to the loan company that gave you the money to buy it all in the first place. And you'll be paying more per month than if you just kept utilities. Now that's not saying that there isn't a place for solar. Don't get me wrong. I have solar. I love it. I could even put some in the shop here, but I'm not going to try to save money by putting solar in my shop. If I were to do that, the first thing I would do is put solar heat in and make it myself. 
meaning that I would make a pop can solar heater and put it on my shop because that would help warm it up a little bit in the winter time. But otherwise, I, you know, if I spend the money, it's unlikely I'm ever going to get that investment back. I might spend the money because I want to, but that's a far cry different from somebody who's trying to spend money to save money. So my advice to those who come in into various groups and say, hey, I want to save money on my electric bill. What should I do? What should I get? Blah, blah, right? What should I build? I say, don't get a new phone. Use an old phone. Cut your cable off, right? Get rid of any landline phones you might have. Stop buying bottled water. Stop eating out. Learn to make things yourself. In fact, quite frankly, <laughs> this, in my opinion, is the convergence of the solar power side of the fence, the greener side of the fence, if you will, and the prepper side of the fence, because they kind of merge together right here. Because the way to save money is to cut your costs first. Cut everything out you possibly can. And reduce the electric that you use every month. Don't look to try and replace what you use with solar, because that's not going to save you money. Not if you already have the power. It'll save you money if you don't. And I've talked about that in another video. But if you've already got the power, it's not going to save you money. So learn to reduce the power you use. And then perhaps, once you've gotten to a point where you considerably reduce the overall power that you used, then you can take that amount of power and see what the cost is to replace it with solar and whether or not you'll break even or maybe save some money. And I would argue that you won't. It's unlikely. Not unless you really seriously plan on being in your home for more than that 12 or 13 year period or five years really because that's how you'd have to do it. So will solar save you money? Well the answer is kind of complicated. As I just said, not really. I mean it can under certain circumstances. It can certainly save you if the power goes out and you lose things because you lost your power like in your freezer or your refrigerator but that's not really a money savings thing. That's more of a preparedness thing. If you've got your own solar power system, maybe a grid tie system, where they're paying you back a little bit of money, though they pay back on wholesale, not retail. Oh, well, maybe some states might be retail, but still it's not enough, okay? If they're paying you back, though, and you've got a battery bank that can, that can help you survive two or three days without the power company, then it may be worth doing. And the one thing I haven't said in this entire video is whether or not it's worth doing. Because I do believe that if you can afford to put in solar, it is worth doing for a number of different reasons. And I could address that in another video. However, I will tell you that in my opinion, it's no more effective buying solar power for your home than it is buying an electric vehicle to save you money from buying gas. Simply not there yet. I think we may get there someday, but we're not there yet. And I love my solar power stuff, folks. But that's just my opinion. All the research I've done tells me that's the case. So there you have it. I hope I helped somebody out. If nothing else, I'll tell you this. Do your research. Know how much power you use every single day. Figure out how many days of autonomy you want to have. That means how many days if the power goes out you're going to have or there's no sunshine or whatever. And then find a system that can actually do that for you and calculate the costs. And I think you're going to find it's co it'll cost you more buying that system and installing it and paying for it over the long run in terms of a loan or whatever than you would pay if you just paid the utility company. And I'm not a shill for utility companies. I love not having to pay the utility bill at our cabin. But here at this house, not, there's no way I would start looking at solar. Not unless I could afford it. And then it's not about being cheap, right? If I can afford to put in $5,000 worth of solar, I already know I'm not going to save that money on my bill. I'd just do it because I could afford to and I want to. But that's not what these people are asking. They're asking, hey, I don't have a lot of money. I want to save money on my electric bill. How do I do that by putting in solar? And the answer I give is you don't. You cut it somewhere else. Anyway, folks, that's all I've got for you today. Appreciate you being here and thanks for sticking around. I'll drop another video over here for you to check out. Y'all have a great day. The old jarhead out.